are the body of Christ, and the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. And from all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Let's try that again. We'll all say it together. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, God the Almighty Father, God and Father, we worship you, we, we give, give you thanks, thanks. We, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts, then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now read Psalm 138, starting with the right side of the church. I will give thanks, thanks to you, O Lord, Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down for your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name. And your word above all things. When I call you answer me, you increase my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing the praise of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of 
trouble, you keep the faith. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Have you ever noticed how just a small detail can make a big difference? On a humorous level, that's often the stuff of jokes about grammar and punctuation providing vastly different meanings for a sentence depending on where the commas go. If any of you know the, uh, the book by Lynn Truss, Eats, Shoots, and Leaves, you'll know what I'm talking about. The panda bear, who you know normally eats bamboo, does the panda bear eat shoots and leaves, or does the panda bear eat shoots and leaves? Big difference. Or if you add an extra zero in a number, it, it's going to increase its value far beyond what you intended, but it's only one little digit off. I mean, what, what difference is that, right? 
Not really. In our first reading this morning, the small detail in this passage comes right at the beginning. In the year that King Uzziah died. Now, this is a bit of a quiz. It's not, uh, no, nobody gets points taken away, but who knows? Does anybody know who King Uzziah is? Put up your hand. Do you know who he is? Didn't think so. <laughs> um, so we don't know who he was or when he lived or even necessarily what kingdom he ruled. And we tend to skip right over that phrase to get to the action of the story, which is the call of Isaiah to the role and ministry of a prophet. It's a passage that's very frequently read at ordinations, and it comes up every three years in the lectionary, so, so it might be somewhat familiar to you. And it's actually an amazing passage with its overwhelming vision of encountering the Lord God while Isaiah was at worship in the temple in Jerusalem and his sense of his own unworthiness and yet at the same time embracing this call that God is calling him to. Here I am, Lord, send me, says Isaiah. So what difference does it make that this vision and this call happened in the year that King Uzziah died. Uzziah was the tenth king of Judah, the southern half of the Holy Land. You may, you may know that uh, after the reign of King Solomon, David's son, uh, there was so much strife and dissension that the, uh, the country got divided into two, the northern kingdom of, Isaiah, of uh, Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. So, Uzziah was the king of Judah, and he had reigned for nearly 50 years in the 8th century before Christ. Nearly 50 years. And that reminds me that this is the weekend in the United Kingdom that uh, Queen Elizabeth is celebrating 70 years on the throne. Those were both reigns of great uh, stability and continuity, even though there was turmoil in, in, within just the stability of having the same monarch on the throne for all those years and providing leadership that the people could depend upon. So when Uzziah died, he brought great uncertainty to the people, that death. And at the same time, there was a new and very powerful king in Assyria, a much larger and more aggressive neighbor to Judah. So the setting for Isaiah's vision was a time of national uncertainty and instability with fears about what might happen within the kingdom, as well as fears about threats from without from the international political scene. All of that is packed into the phrase, in the year that King Uzziah died makes a difference knowing that. The vision that Isaiah had was amazing, overwhelming, a no doubt frightening experience as sight and sound and the Lord's presence filled every available space accompanied by an angelic presence. And lest we think of angels as little cute little babies with wings, that's not what Isaiah saw. He saw seraphim with huge wings and eyes and, and uh, almost indescribable. There was nothing cute or sweet about these angels. Isaiah's response to all this was to become aware of his own sinfulness, his own shortcomings, his own smallness, and feeling ill-equipped to appear before the holiness of God. Remember, in the Hebrew scriptures, it was assumed that a human being could not see the face of God and live. But God provides a remedy for Isaiah's shortcomings. The live coal from the altar fire purifies Isaiah as a prophet and a mouthpiece for the Lord so that he can answer the summons that he has been given. But the message Isaiah is to proclaim is not one of certainty or comfort in the midst of the fear and turmoil that Judah is going through. 
Instead, the message, which is given in the verses just after this reading, so, you know, please go home and look it up or pick up your pew Bible and take a look at what comes next. The message which is given in those verses is one of destruction, of the people's unwillingness to listen to God and to come to terms with those things that are threatening their existence. God saying, they're not going to pay attention, they're not going to listen, they're going to put their heads in the sand. And yet, there is hope that even after the destruction of the realm, a new beginning will be possible. The holy seed of the community, that's the phrase that Isaiah uses, the holy seed of the community will be like a seed that is in the stump of an oak tree that has been cut down. Even once that tree has been felled, there is still life in it yet. I'm sure Isaiah needed such an overwhelming vision of God's presence and purpose in order to be able to undertake this mission and to stick with this very challenging job, which I expect that a lot of people did not want to hear. His vision was deep and important and true. We know that we have been living through our own time of uncertainty and instability. There has been much turmoil, both domestically and internationally. And some days it can feel like there is no solid ground upon which to move forward. And we are all weary by decision fatigue. And yet, God has been in it all. There is life there in that stump. We've all had some important experiences or insights or learnings. We've all come, we've, some have people, Sorry, start again. Some of us have come to the realization that it was time to move on, whatever that might be. Time to move on from a job, or from a home, or even, sadly, from a friendship. Some of us learned more clearly the value of our own families, and the value of our faith. For others, a death brought unwanted pain and grief and the changes that come with it. We have learned things about ourselves and about our society that we wish we could have turned away from and ignored. We learned anew to value what we actually have more than what we wished we had. We all learned to do familiar things in new and different and unfamiliar and often uncomfortable ways. Some of these experiences may have felt profound, while others may have felt more prosaic and practical. But God has been in it all, leading, guiding, supporting, consoling, challenging, encouraging. I'm sure you can add some other adjectives in there. This is true for us as individuals and as families and also as a church. God has been preparing us for whatever comes next. Just like Isaiah having the coal from the altar touched to his lips so he would be symbolically purified and prepared for the mission he was being sent on, so we have been shaped and refined and redirected by God so that we will be ready for the next stage of our mission of being a joyful community of faith in Christ. In order for us to have the clearest sense of purpose and understanding of how we have been changed or refocused, we will need to talk with one another about what has been important to us during pandemic. What have been our experiences? What have been our learnings? What has been valuable? What has been painful? What have you been glad to let go of, if anything? Is there something new that you have started during these many months that feels important to continue? Is there something that seems like it would be a good idea for us to pay attention to now and in the days ahead? 
that we would not have done before. These are all the sorts of thoughts and experiences that we should be talking about with one another in personal and informal ways so that we as a parish can benefit from each other's wisdom and insight and sense of God's presence, whether that was a, an experience like Isaiah's or just a thought you had when you were having your morning coffee. God comes to us in all different ways. And so we want to do this so we can be ready and be in a good place to respond to whatever God has next. The Bishop of the Diocese of Eastern Tennessee in the Episcopal Church, Bishop Brian Lee Cole, talks about faith communities moving at the speed of trust. Moving at the speed of trust. That means taking the time to build trust with one another as well as with God, to recognize that there will always be those who want to sprint ahead as well as those who want to walk with very measured steps. Both are important and valid, but the trust comes when we realize that both the ones who want to move ahead quickly and those who want to move ahead more slowly, both need to be held in relationship with one another and need to have bonds of recognition and care and love for each other. And we do that by listening and talking together and being curious and respectful of one another's God experiences by praying together and by listening some more. God's presence and purpose for us continues to unfold. It will take shape in ways that are both old and new, familiar and unfamiliar. And the vision or intuition or experience of God that we each have becomes woven into the mission that God has for all of us together. Just as Isaiah's mission was rooted in his vision and experience of God in the temple. And it begins with listening and talking and listening and trusting and listening some more moving at the speed of trust for the sake of God's purpose for us. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us to be all of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and the cross of God. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with his prescriptions. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of our life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge the love of baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People of Form 4, found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the Church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Praying especially for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Carly, our own bishop, for Vicky, our rector, and the community of St. John Baptist. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Give thanks for the ministry of our Narnia book group and our outreach ministries especially Lounsbury Meadow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those on our Anglican cycle of prayer and on our diocesan cycle of prayer. In our parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks and pray for Charlotte Davis, Sister Deborah Francis, Jamie DeLorenzo, Barbara and Tim Erde, Molly Farber, and Mary Beth Finn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Barbara Erde, Abbot Gear, Patty Harris, Bob Hedrick, Flo Kostecka, Roger Kosempel, Molly Perdek, Jim Young, all those on our prayer list, all those who are unemployed, and those who we name. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Blaise Carafello, Gary Celeste, Maureen Butler, and those we name. That your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all those saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Returning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned against, against you in thought, word, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have, have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. ourselves. We are, we are truly, truly sorry and humbly repent. For the, For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And And also also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace without shaking hands. Peace be with you. Peace Peace, Peace, everyone. And peace to all of those who are with us on Zoom. (laughs) Please be seated. In our announcements this morning, we uh, announcements are on the back page. Uh, Year-end contribution uh, statements were mailed home. I hope you all got them. Uh, If you have any questions about them, please be in touch with Susie in the office, and we'll track down the answers for you. The Nardia Book Club is meeting this afternoon to take up our final book in the series, The Last Battle. Uh, The information about that is here. Um, Twelve Baskets Food Pantry met again yesterday, and um, uh, Barb, do you want to say anything about it? Uh, we had a little bit more than we had originally. We had uh, 15 families yesterday. I have not had the opportunity to get all the totals down, but it's up and running well. Okay, great. It's well known in the, in the area. Thank you. And if, if you couldn't hear what Barb was saying, we served 15 families <coughs> yesterday, uh, an increase of uh, the previous time there were 14 families. And one of the things I think that's been really helpful is the School superintendent for Long Hill has been very um, intentional, intentional about making this, making sure the school population knows we're here, as well as other people in the community. And so we've gotten uh, we've gotten a lot of good help with that. That's a wonderful thing. Thank you. Um, the Family Promise Homeless Shelter is our turn to serve. There is tomorrow night, and uh, of course during pandemic, it's all different than the way it used to be done. So the families are housed in um, long-term um, uh, sort of motel living uh, up in Mars Plains, but they still do need our assistance, particularly with gift cards for gasoline or Uber or ShopRite. Um, and of course, they also need groceries because they can do a lot of their own cooking. So if you can help with any of that, if you can drop a gift card off in the church office or in the uh, mail slot before 3, o'clock, 3 p.m. tomorrow, that would be very helpful. And if you want to provide actual groceries or a portion of a meal, please email Asine and let her know because uh, she will transport those things up to the, uh, to the shelter. Um, okay, is there anything else that needs to come before the parish this morning in terms of announcements? Is there anybody who has a birthday or an anniversary in the month of February or some other milestone? Anybody here who has a birthday or an anniversary, please come forward. Let us pray. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase, especially Bob and Stephanie. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. And Vicki, Francis' story's birthday is this month also. Ah, yes. And so we should have included Francis in that. If, I guess Martha and Ellen maybe are on the uh, on the Zoom. So a very happy birthday to Francis' story. And I know someone else who has a birthday this month is Johannes Wellerding. So uh, keep him in our 
prayers of celebration as well as anybody else you might know. Uh, please know that uh, as we come forward for communion, uh, we're going to just be receiving standing as we have been doing all throughout the fall. Uh, the ushers will tell you when to come forward. Um, it will be bread only, so I'll put the bread in your hand, and then just as you step away, just slip the, uh, slip the wafer under your mask and consume that way. And of course, if you, uh, if you need a gluten-free wafer, please tell me, and if um, you just want to receive a blessing, cross your arms across your chest and you'll be given a blessing. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and not thine own have we given thee. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, found on page 369. Please stand. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. 
At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race. You blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen, Risen Lord, be known to us in the, in the breaking, breaking of the bread. bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Come and receive the gifts of life, hope, and freedom. Thank you. 
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. It's definitely the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Jen is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. the bread of heaven. To the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Sing together hymn number 686. 